Darktable 4.2.0 is out now, and in this video, we're going to look at the new features. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 120, the first of four episodes looking at the new features of Darktable 4.2.0. As Aurelian stated a while back, Darktable is pretty much feature complete now. Like, everything you need is there. And as a result, this release really doesn't have a lot of shiny new bells and whistles. You know, there's one new module, which is the Sigmoid module, uh, which we'll talk about in a minute. But a lot of the rest of it is just, you know, tweaks to what is already there. So, you know... If you're looking for shiny new objects, this might be a little bit of a disappointing release. It is what it is. Anyway, um, before we move on, I would like to address one thing, and that is the release date for the new versions of Darktable. In the past, it has always been the 25th of December, and then when the releases started to become so massive that going a year was too long a wait, they also did a release on the 25th of June. The developers have since, and I think it was Pascal who, who initiated this, uh, made the decision to move the release back to the Equinox, which is the 21st of December and June. And the reason for that is that it means that the developers can have Christmas in peace and quiet, you know, or as peaceful and quiet as Christmas ever gets. But it means that they don't have to be thinking about the release of Darktable whilst also trying to celebrate Christmas. I think that's a great idea, and um, yeah, that's why the release has moved forward by four days. And while we're talking about the developers, I'd again like to say great work to everybody involved in the development of Darktable. I still love it. All right, so new features. The Sigmoid module is a new module designed to do contrast curves but with a more simplified interface than what you get with Filmic RGB. Jacob Andron, the guy who developed the Sigmoid module, basically said that that was his intent, was to try and give you the ability to do contrast without having to understand all the bells and whistles that are featured in Filmic RGB. Now, I will confess, I was not even aware that uh, Sigmoid was in development, uh, and when I went to look at it about a week ago, I realised that the discussion goes back to almost two years, to January of 2021. And I started sifting through all of that data, because there's conversations on both Pixels.us and on GitHub, and realised that there was just a mountain of information, and I just went, way too much. Um, I did see a really in take the gloves off and come out swinging. Uh, he was not particularly complimentary of the Sigmoid module and what it does. Uh, and I won't confess to understanding the arguments that he put forward. I will take him at face value and knowing his past history and how well he understands the maths, I'll assume he knows what he's talking about. What I have worked out from my playing around with Sigmoid uh, over the last few days uh, is the following. I've, I've got this image, which is a, an outtake from the shoot Tegan and I did a couple of years ago of our autumn colours. Uh, so we'll turn off Filmic. So that is the image pretty much straight out of camera. If we turn on Sigmoid and have a look at the controls, what we've got is a contrast adjustment, a skew, a colour processing uh, drop-down with just two options, and then a preserve hue slider, which only appears when you are using the per-channel color processing mode. What you will find with Sigmoid is it's very easy to go overboard, okay? The idea is you simply click and drag, and it will add or reduce contrast as you would expect. What I do find, though, is that the per-channel color processing mode does tend to oversaturate quite a lot. And I'm not a massive fan of that, although I did see uh, Todd Pryor in one of his comments on the, I think it was on the pixels.us discussion, 
say that in his use of the sigmoid module, he's found that that little saturation bump that you get with sigmoid means that he doesn't have to spend, you know, time going into the color balance RGB to add a bit of saturation. So maybe there's an argument there for that. The idea is just simply dial in the contrast to the point that you like it. The skew will essentially allow you to skew that contrast to be a little more in the shadows or a little more in the highlights, as you would expect, something like that. It can get a little bit out of, yeah, like sort of blowing the highlights out pretty easily there if you drag the skew to the right too aggressively. And then the preserve hue, this is the part that worries me. If you pull that down, you can see all of those colors shifted in the background, big time, and probably in Tegan's skin as well. You can see that there's quite a lot of hue shift happening. And I'm not sure why that would be the case. I don't know why you would ever drop that to anything less than 100. But like I said, I've only played with it for a couple of days, so there's probably some parts to the module that I'm not completely understanding. What I did find, though, is that if you change the color processing to RGB ratio, and I, again, I saw a comment on Pixels.us, and it might have been Todd once again, who said that using the RGB ratio color processing uh, mode, the results tend to be a little bit more like what you get from Filmic RGB. What I found was, particularly for something like this with portraiture, if you want to get that really high contrast, high fashion look, this can work really well. So we'll just zoom in on Tegan's face here. And you can really push that. And, you know, that's, to, to my mind, very similar to a lot of the fashion photography that, you know, I, I see around the web and in print these days. You might then want to desaturate that a little bit. So I'd come over to Color Balance RGB and Global Saturation, just pull that out. And that didn't take a whole lot of time. And we've got something that's, you know, very common in the fashion industry. Now, whether that's the correct usage of the module, I don't know. It was just something I discovered in my playing in the last couple of days. Um, feel free to use or discard as you see fit. But that is the new Sigmoid module. I will, over the course of <laughs> January, hopefully, uh, sit down and try and get more of an understanding of what's going on under the hood. And if I come to a better understanding of what Sigmoid is doing, I'll revisit it in a future video. Next up, the Highlight Reconstruction module has had two new processing algorithms added to it. Uh, for this, I have dug out an old image from New Zealand from eh, 11 years ago. Uh, I had to go that far back to find an image where I'd actually clipped some raw data. Okay, so Shift-O will show us that there is clipped data in those clouds. And if we zoom in on those clouds, and if we now look at highlight reconstruction, we will see that there are now five different algorithms that you can choose from. The guided Laplacians was new in version 4.0. The in-paint, sorry, in-paint opposed and segmentation-based algorithms are new in 4.2. And in-paint opposed is the new default. And the reason that it's the default is because in testing it was discovered that this was a better option than the old default, which was clip highlights. And if we choose clip highlights, you'll see all of that stuff in there went this horrible purplish cyan color, uh, which clearly is not a good look. Uh, where the in-paint opposed actually stays a little truer to the colors that surround the clipped areas. I'm guessing that that's what it's doing. It's looking at surrounding areas and using that to reconstruct. But again, I've only spent a couple of days playing with 
version 4.2 for reasons we'll get to later. Okay, so that is the new uh, default algorithm within the highlight reconstruction module in Paint Opposed. Uh, segmentation based, I'm not really sure how that works. Even in its default settings, you can see that those colors have remained much more true to how they should look than what you got with clip highlights, which changes the colors to a horrible, murky, cyan purple. Blech. All right, I'm going to wrap it up there. I didn't initially plan to do multiple videos. It was only when I sat down to edit all of the content that I'd recorded that I realized there was 40 minutes of content. So I'm going to break it up into four 10-minute chunks. All right, I will catch you in the next one.